Recording is, it's recording. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee to order at 6.04 p.m. on Thursday, December 9th. We continue to meet virtually due to the pandemic. I'll take a roll call, make sure everybody can hear me and be heard. Um, Sam McLeod. Present. Tim Neal. Uh, present and taking minutes tonight. Thank you. Sarah Isinger. Present. Uh, Katie, not mm -hmm. yet, I don't think, but she will be coming. Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Andy McDougall. Present. Eddie Startup. Present. Dave Williams. Not yet. Okay. Well, we certainly have a quorum. So. Let's begin. Sarah, thank you for the minutes from last week. Are you ready to, um, I don't know, take notes if uh, we move ahead to discuss those, right? If you had a chance to review the minutes, would you please raise your hand just so I know we're okay. Could you repeat that again, please? If you, if you were able to review the minutes from last week. Yeah, okay, so we're prepared to. To talk Sarah, about. I got a um, lot of you know emails from several folks, maybe four of you. So mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to put, incorporate those changes. Right. So at this time, um, Hetty, I don't. Do you have a question? No, I'm sorry. I'm just forgetting to put my hand down. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. We all do it. Um, so does anyone have? a substantive comment or suggestion to make regarding these minutes. Looks like Andy does. Yeah, I have a, a brief one under high school track project. Um, it okay. says that uh, Anna and I would not support the project if the track is reoriented. And it's the opposite. We would it's only- It's not reoriented, got it. it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, missed that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anna, was that your comment also? Okay. That was mine. Yep. The only other thing is this is just because you're here. Uh, A N A, not A N N A. Just one in. Double negatives are in I'm the minutes. I'm sorry. Who are you? Is that a comment to Sarah on the minutes? To Sarah. Okay. Yep. If I'm looking at the right. I'm looking oh, at the right. Interesting. I just inherited the members present. So. Um, yeah, yeah. No worries. It's A N A. That's all. No problem. Tim, you'll want to make that correction too then if you've inherited this document. Yep, that's what keeps happening. Again? <laughs> my, name is spelled, my name is spelled A-N-A, -A, not yeah. A-N-A, -A. that's all. Oh, okay. So if you're using the same sheet, it's just been a carry forward typo. All right. I We're going to correct that. Sure. On Someday, you know. <laughs> just, just in time. All right, I don't, I don't, mind, I don't mind correcting. We Thank finally you. corrected the Zoom link <laughs> notification. So. We get there in the end. All right, anything else? Okay, and I see Dave Zomek has joined us. Um, and I should have said, these are the minutes of last week's meeting, December 2nd. So yeah. is, is there a motion to approve as amended? Andy, and a second. So moved. Second. Anna. Okay, I have to I have to call. Um, <clears throat> if you're in favor, please say aye. Sam? Aye. Tim? Aye. Sarah Isinger? Aye. Is Katie here yet? No, but Dave Williams is. Oh. Hi. Welcome. Hi, welcome, Dave. All right. Yes, uh, Anna? Aye. Anna? Yes? Andy? Aye. Eddie? Aye. Dave, we're voting to accept the minutes of last week. Are you prepared to vote, Dave Williams? Yes. Yeah? Aye? Aye, yes. Aye, thank you. OK. Um, and I'm an aye. So that's eight in favor, none opposed, and one absent at the moment. Okay, 
All right, thank you. It's great these minutes. Can I ask a, a, a minute yeah. taking question? Mm -hmm. My previous experience with minutes, I noticed that in the previous minutes and several minutes, you've listed each person's vote on the minutes. To me, that's not necessary. I would just as soon say the vote was like eight in favor with one absent without identifying whose vote was what in the approval of the minutes. And I don't know if there's a standard protocol you use or what general feelings are in regards to that. I think that's different than the substantive votes, which I'll get to of projects, but just for minute approval, seems to me that that's not necessary, but didn't wanna make that judgment if that's not what the committee has done historically. I would say it's not our practice, but that it's fine. Okay, fair enough. I'm not, can I speak? I'm not sure yeah. if it's something that's required because of Zoom meetings where you have to have roll call. Oh, no, he means in the minutes to list. Oh, I mean, in the minutes. Doesn't. The minutes, I okay. would reflect that the approval of the minutes of uh, December 2nd were approved eight in favor and one absent or something. That's all I'd say without identifying each vote. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, I would say that's the minute taker's, thank minute you. taker's choice. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, so now we will take public comment if there is anyone attending who wishes to speak. There is anyone attending who wishes to speak, please raise your Zoom hand. There's two people in attendance, but I see no hands. Another few seconds. All right, then there is no public comment. And so now we move on to the discussions and votes, I hope on uh, the proposals. Fin financials? Oh, um, I skipped right over that, I'm sorry. Okay, Sonia, is there anything new for us? There's there's no updates. I, okay. No more money came in over the last week. <laughs> well, some weeks okay. we're lucky, yeah, yeah. I guess I figured since we didn't have any- um... State aid is usually the last bucket that drops. Okay, all right. So, Sonia, if you can bring up this spreadsheet that lists this year's proposals and our straw polls and where we will record the votes. Um, while you're doing that, I think I would suggest that we um, not take up the track at this time because we have not yet got any new information about costs for the estimate of doing that. Um, and since if we do want to recommend that project under, under whatever conditions, um, we would recommend borrowing for it. I don't think we uh, need to decide that at this point, right? So uh, I can't see everyone now. Does that seem, first of all, Sonia, does that seem reasonable? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. To postpone mm -hmm. that. Does anyone disagree and feel that we should be voting on the track tonight? No. Okay. So um, that said, I think. Can you, Sonia? Can you blow this up a bit? We don't need to see the all the top menus. Oh, okay. I do though. <clears throat> oh yeah okay <clears throat> is that better that's good for me yeah that's yeah. fine all right so why don't we uh deal first with oh it just it just disappeared i think the administration we do have to vote on that yep yeah okay so twenty five thousand dollars for administrative costs. Um, we did have some discussion about that. Did anyone have anything more to ask or say about that? Andy? I was just going to ask if you could give a, a high level refresher. I know some of the items. I'm not sure if I remember all of them. Um, and then Sam, you had your hand up earlier. I saw you waving. So, um, oops. Do Tommy, you want to go ahead. So, so the 25... We just increased the 25,000 last year because we are trying to get more signage out there saying, this is, these are your CPA dollars at work. 
So um, signs are kind of expensive. But other than that, the only administrative we used is to pay our coalition dues. And that's based on how much uh, surcharge we generate each year and any um, legal ads that we have to put in the paper for our public hearings. That's basically what our admin is used for. Do you have a general sense of, of how much is signs versus how much is kind of those required? Uh, so how much I is added discretionary? 15, versus... I added 15,000 for signs. Okay, and then 10,000 as kind of requirements. All right. Mm -hmm. Sam, did you have a question on that? I just, I see... Go ahead. I just had a question on your prior comment regarding the track, which I don't disagree with, but uh, when would you envision us discussing the track? In other words, is the suggestion that the committee will not hear it pending a specific inquiry from the applicant? In other words, do we need to pose a question to the applicant? I uh, think the applicant's aware. Uh, the applicant offered to seek more financial information. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, Sonia, do you disagree? Yeah, I think when they have a more solid plan in place, they can bring it to CPAC since it's going to be a borrowing. It doesn't matter the timing. It can happen after the tax rate is set. Okay. So, but I will, you know, make sure to reach out to them in January and say, <laughs> say we hope we hope we'll be hearing from you and you know when might we that kind of thing. Maybe Dave Zomek has something to say on that point. Sure, I was just going to add that that Sean Mangano and I are are working closely with Doug Slaughter over the schools. So this is this is really a collaborative town and and school effort. So we are expecting those uh, um, those new the new uh, uh, information on on financial assessment of the the various options. You know, any day now. So we will get that to you as soon as we've had a chance to analyze it with uh, Weston and Sampson. Okay. Um, so, so they're on the case. The team is on the case. Absolutely. I, I'm okay. very invested in this because yeah. uh, of the years we spent developing that plan. So we'll yeah. get it to you as soon as we have it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I want. I see Tim's hand, but I want to ask Sonia first. Um, is it the case that uh, if not all the money for signs is spent on signs, that that excess is returned to the account? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, it always comes back to the CPA fund. Okay, so it's a maximum again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tim. I didn't have my hand up. Is it up? I don't oh. see it. Oh, sorry. No, it's my I, it's my cursor turned into a hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Didn't know it would do that. All right. Um. So then, uh, Derek, can I ask? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. I it's just. I know we talked about this last year when, when Sam was walking through sort of the signage um, options. Um, are we requiring um, folks who receive um, funds through CPAC to put signs up or is it just a, a request? I don't remember if we discussed that or where we landed. Um, I'm not sure if that if a, if a specific message has gone to private applicants, I think all the town, that the various parts of town know about that and will be um, incorporating signage. That certainly has already happened at the Kendrick Park playground, for example. And there, there's banner up at the dog yeah. park, I think. So, Seen that. so, so the, the 15,000, Sonia, you think like yeah. that that's, anticipate is that anticipating covering 18 signs or 18 sign packages or just like the town one i just want to make sure the number is right i don't know david can you answer that because i really hasn't haven't been a part of the signs and i thought we were talking about um signs saying your cpa dollars at work but also plaques for things that say um made possible by cpa dollars and the prices yeah. vary yeah, you know, this is something that Sam and others kind of championed. And yeah, we, we, I don't know if you as a group voted, but I think there was strong support uh, for there to be both the, the temporary signs advertising, you know, 
this project is is supported, uh, you know, funded by CP or CPA dollars, i.e., the, you know, uh, uh, Kendrick Park or the dog park, et cetera. But then, I believe you you also and and staff agreed wholeheartedly that we should put permanent signs on those those projects that are funded, both a kiosk for a trail or or a private project should also have recognition. And I think uh, Angela Mills and in my office designed those and they were vetted with 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 you all a year ago or so and and there was general agreement on those sam is my is my memory right there i saw uh anna's hand up first i'd be glad to respond although no she says it's okay i see read the sign language um <clears throat> uh, my recollection is similar to dave's uh i know that we vetted the designs and we vetted the concept of uh enabling Dave and staff to implement signage using the administrative funds throughout town projects, current and previous. Uh, in particular, the thought was it would be easier to start with some of the existing trails. Uh, certainly the new projects such as Kendrick and others, the sign that was there looks great. We never actually voted regarding private other than the concept that we thought it would be worthwhile with a few internal questions regarding uh, how that might work. We didn't resolve that. We left it sitting because we wanted to move forward with designs to get the banners out and with the town property. It's something we could talk about uh, as we go forward. The question related to how, how might we uh, require or not require that. And we never actually settled that uh, because the onus was on making progress with designs and getting it out there. So, uh, that's my okay. understanding of where we are. And, and Sister Rain, and I just want to make sure the 15,000 would cover signage for all of these. That's all. And like we can decide down the road, you know, if Sarah wants to bring it up, like we can we can talk about whether we want to require it or not. But if we feel good that this covers it, then that's really what I wanted to have answered. Anna? Similar question, uh, making sure this covers what we would need. Um, so some projects aren't left out. And then my other thing is eventually, Sonia, would do you see this price kind of slowly? I know we're talking, I mean, in the grand scheme, we're not talking about a huge chunk of change, but um, you know, ideally those those signs are going to be re the temporary signs will be reused project to project, correct? Yes. Yeah, I see nodding. So okay, that's I just wanted to make sure we weren't buying temporary things that were not able to be reused. So thank you. And if can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Uh, also, um, there was money allocated last year, so there's still a balance from last year. I don't have it in front of me, but um, this is just to make sure that we don't run out. Great. Thank there's you. There's a lot of trails out there. <laughs> there is. Tim? Yeah, I'm sorry. With the spreadsheet up, I don't know how to electronically raise a hand, so I'll just go the old-fashioned way. <laughs> um, I thought that was an interesting uh, discussion about private versus town. Uh, and I really think we should have that. Uh, when might we have that discussion in terms of requiring applicants if they're approved? I think I think we we can have that discussion. Um, I would rather not have it tonight because <laughs> it's okay. not urgent, Fair whereas enough. this is urgent. But I do think um, it is worth getting back to, especially because we are now proposing, or at least we have applications from some private entities. Right. Um, it's also the case, however, that, you know, the projects don't even start until July at the earliest, and they may not finish for even a long time after that. So I think um, no signs are going to be needed for a while. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I think, it, it, yes, we should come back to that. Um, I think at this point, there's probably plenty of money for any sign needs this year. So perhaps we could dispose of this article. Would somebody please move this $25,000 for administration? So Andy, is there a second? Second. All right, so I'll have to, or maybe Sonia can, or I'll read the names. <laughs> we'll just do it the same way, yes or no. Um, Anna? Yes. Sarah Isinger? Yes. Hetty? Yes. Andy? Yes. Sam? Yes. I am a yes. Tim? Yes. Dave Williams? Yes. And Katie? Yes. 
welcome, by the way. I saw you Thank you. a while ago. Sorry, sorry, I was arrived That's okay. late. That's all right. Um, now, unless somebody <laughs> thinks we should approach these a different way, I'd say let's just go down the, down the sheet. All right. We will, at this point, have to confirm what amounts of money we, you know, we want to recommend. So on the table, yes, we have a request for $500,000 from the town for acquisition and development of transitional housing. Um, we can either just vote on that, or if somebody is at this point uncomfortable with that number, we could have a discussion of a different number first. Um, would anyone want to propose a number other than, I mean, other than zero, like if you don't want the project, but. <laughs> Andy? I, I don't want to propose another number. I just want to confirm that column K, that 93, is that indicating the negative 93 that that with the 250 for the row five that we are under or over? Under. Okay. Cool. Meaning, meaning we would be dipping into our, we would need to pull money from reserves, right? Right. Do we if need, we wanted to. If you wanted to. Fund, fund all of these yeah. as, yeah. Yep, okay. okay. I'm comfortable, if you're looking, I don't know if you're looking for a motion, but if you want one, I would certainly be happy to give one for the. Okay, why don't you go ahead and do that again? Okay. Yep, five five hundred thousand for acquisition and development of transitional housing. Is there a second? I second it. That's Katie. Yes. Thank you. Oops. All right. So, um, Anna. Yes. Sarah Isinger. Yes. Hetty. Yes. Andy. Yes. Sam. Yes. I'm a yes. Tim. Uh, I, yes. Dave Williams. Yes. And Katie. Yes. All right, thank you. All right, next we have the Affordable Housing um, Trust. Uh, the request was $500,000 in our model here in the gold column, we have $250,000. So I guess there, we could try to <laughs> figure out where the majority is before we take a vote, or we could um, first move one of those numbers, and if it fails, try the other number. Can we, could I propose an, a discussion first uh -huh. yeah. getting to a number? Yes. Why, you know, just reminding us. Um, I mean, I think we remember sort of what the, how, I feel like I'd rather have a discussion about the number. If okay. That would, okay then. All right. Well, I'll, I'll start. <laughs> um, I would, um, I frankly would propose no more than $250,000 and maybe even less um, because there's no urgency to this request. The trust um, um, asks for CPA funds every year. And as far as I've, long as I've been involved, it always gets some, I think it always gets some funds. I hope that's right. Um, but they don't have any specific project. If they do have a specific project that is going to demand more money than they have, they can come back to us. So that's, a lack of urgency, I would say, is is a rationale for reducing the number. Okay, Andy. Thanks. Um, I was going to actually go a little different way and say if we have that surplus of ninety three that I was I was going to recommend we up it to three fifty. Um, honestly, like and and operate at kind of a zero budget here. But I I also know that that there was some talk of other maybe some other proposals coming through. Uh, relative to reparations, I think, Anna, or did well, I? We, we have a deficit. We have a deficit of ninety-three, not a surplus. Oh, did I get it back? Ugh, yeah. Even after I asked the question, I got it back. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna strike what I just said. Sorry. Okay. But you are correct on potential future proposals. That part is true. Kim. 
Uh, I would feel comfortable with the 250 unless the numbers come back on the track. That means we're going to have to borrow more than I would feel comfortable with. Uh, I would rather spend it on housing than the track. So I'm not, so we'll go from there. I don't know if that experiment is that, is that clear. I just wanted to, for the record. Yeah, but but we can't. No, we don't have the track number tonight, and we're voting on this tonight. So oh, I understand. Have, yeah, do the best we can. Also, if the track comes back with a higher number, we don't have to award them that full amount. You know, it's, of course, they might come back the following year and ask for the balance. But, so I um, guess let me ask the question a different way perhaps is that is if the track comes back and we're trying to stay within the uh, allocated dollars, can we then raise, if we vote for 250 tonight on this one, can we raise it if the track number comes back differently or? They could come back, right? Yeah, they would have to come housing. back. Okay. And if we have a reserve, they could vote it from reserve, but if they don't, if we don't have a reserve and our tax rate is set, then they can't come back because there okay. won't be available funds. Okay, thank you. Sam? Uh, just for clarity, uh, following up with Tim's inquiry, which I think is a good one, uh, the number that, and Andy's actually, the number that we're seeing on a total is 2,973,000, of which uh, there's a deficit, it looks like, of uh, 93,000. On line 22, we have a general reserve. Is the track the track is nowhere included in this? Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And if we were to um, go forward at some point with a dollar amount for a track, hypothetically, if we approved it, would the bonding portion for the this cycle appear within this budgetary group? Or if we bonded it, would it? It would be, be a future year, and it would be in the blue section down here where debt, and it would only be the debt service. So it wouldn't be an eight hundred thousand dollar hit all at once. It would right. be whatever that debt service is for that year. So it would be the proportional amount, but it would start with the debt service time period one as a portion of this budget cycle, correct? No, no, no. When they need the money. It may be two years out. I see. Right. So the Remember, debt service doesn't start until they actually start using it in the future. Correct. Right. Sam, do you remember that we saw a debt service schedule? I do. I think I do. the track was maybe an FY25. Like we saw sort mm -hmm. of future year. Um, it might even be one of these sheets, but it did not start. It doesn't come from this allocation. Uh, so in terms of a response to Tim's question, I guess, uh, it seems clear that the track would not impact this year's dollar amounts, whether we approved it or not. Am I correct? Correct. Okay, that's True. what I. That's where I was getting at. It, it affects our, future. Next, you know, future debt service. So yeah. more of the funds, future funds, will go to paying for paying for those long term those bonds. Finance bond it. Yeah. Best times at Richmond. <laughs> yeah. All right. Does anyone, Andy? Yeah, thanks again, Sarah. I was going to ask just to then clarify your your idea. Would you suggest that we would lower this to balance the budget so that I'm going to get the math right this time? So like um, that this would be in the 150 range or something like that. That would. Or, or are you going to an even different number? I just that would to... certainly do it if if people. Um, I. One might argue that there's more flexibility in this number than in maybe all the other numbers, because it is it is going into just a, their trust account and it's not for a specific project. So if you want, we could vote the other projects, which are you know have budgets for specific work. Um, it, it, maybe we're not going to approve all those. Maybe we will but we would have a better sense of how much, how quickly we're drawing down our funds. Thanks. I see some nodding, but Anna? Well, so then Sarah, would it make sense if this is the one that feels the most flexible to do this one last so that we- That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah, I'm saying. We okay. could do Sorry, yeah. I, I didn't mean to repeat what you were saying. That's so my, right. my question that does pertain, you know what, I'm gonna wait on my question then. If that's our plan, I will wait on my other question. Kim? 
Uh, that was going to be my, my question too. Okay, let's, all right. Then let's, let's then let's come back to this one. All right, and we'll move on to the housing trust's request for thirty thousand dollars for consulting services, which might be used over two years. I think um, they draw on the consultant as needed. Andy, uh, just quick clarification: Could someone remind me why? The, some of these are shaded um, orange. Why is this one orange? Um, I'm not sure. What do you mean? Why is it? Oh, the proposal. Some of them are formatted oh. orange and blue, and uh, I wasn't sure if there's any relevance to that. If there's, if there's, I mean, I, it doesn't affect my opinion of the project. The only ones that should be shaded are the ones that the amounts changed. Right. So I probably hit the wrong one. That's okay. All. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, does anyone, your hand's still up, Andy. Does anyone have, want to make another comment before we just vote on this? Seeing no hands, let's proceed with a vote on recommending $30,000 to the Housing Trust for program development. That's the consulting services. All right, Anna. Uh, we didn't have a motion, but I'll make the motion. Oh, okay. Anna, we'll move it. Who wants to second it? <laughs> Sam. All right, then let's vote. Um, Anna? Yes. Sarah Isinger? Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Hetty? Yes. Andy? Yes. Sam? Yes. I'm a yes. Tim? Yes. Dave Williams? Yes. And Katie? Yes. All right. Then the next is a request from the town for $100,000 for uh, a part time non benefited staff person to help in the planning department, I believe, with all the various housing projects, uh, affordable housing projects and efforts under, uh, that the town wants to get underway. Okay, anyone have a comment or statement to make about this? All right, who wants to move it then? I move. That's Andy, okay. Tim, I'll give you this second. second. <laughs> all right. Um, let's vote then. Anna. Aye. Sarah Isinger. Aye. Hetty. Aye. Andy. Aye. Sam. Yes. I'm a yes. Tim. Yes. Dave. Yes. And Katie. Yes. All right. Next is the J.C. Nutting Building Envelope Preservation Project. That's a um, property owned by the town's uh, housing authority. And they are requesting $87,000, $87,934. And I believe they have an equivalent uh, amount of funding from a state agency. Does anyone wish to make a comment about this project? Oh, um, I would move that we adopt this. All right, so Hetty's moves. Who would like to second? I second it. Dave, okay. All right then, uh, Anna. Aye. Sarah Isinger. Aye. Hetty. Aye. Andy. Aye. Sam. Yes. I'm an I. Tim. Yes. <laughs> That's all right, Dave. Um, I. And Katie. I. I think we all may see Sonia's cursor moving at different speeds. All right. Um, Sonia, next, was there? I was just going to ask Sonia if she could highlight the next one because that was a price change, just because it does help my brain to know those. <laughs> A cost change. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what happened. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. 
All right, I have to admit, I don't know exactly what Sean included in $241,915. And I don't know if Sonia knows, but I, I believe, <laughs> I'm sorry. I believe it was the roof and chimney. And I think there was one more thing, but I don't know the third thing. Do you know what it was not what it was excluding then? Um, Besides the furnace and interior painting, I think. I, I think that, yeah. All right. Well, I guess we have to assume. I could go Sean, look, but I would screw up the screenshot. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. All right. I have an idea of what he excluded. Sam, what do you think? <clears throat> well, I was running the different numbers on it. I came up to 241 by excluding the furnace interior paint. Uh, the painting in general and the and the um, shutters, believe it or not, came to 240. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I did read your comments, um, Sonia, on the spreadsheet, but I believe it. Well, I know it definitely included the roof, the uh, masonry work, right. and the dormers, uh, and some it's of the other supplementals. Porch, porch repair, I think. Yeah, and maybe the major. resetting the steps. Okay. All right, does anyone have, um, yeah, Sam? I, I'm assuming you're saying, does anyone have any questions or discussion yes. on it? Yes, yes. Um, I didn't mean to jump the gun. So yeah. I, I just, uh, you know, I looked it over. He, he took out about 110 or so, which is a good amount. The only items that come to my attention in the current list, uh, since it was a pretty prudent way of uh, removing the less important items, just the windows, it's just the general budgetary, you know, bidding process. I see $3,300 per window replacement of the 13 windows in the dormers. Uh, that's a lot of money <laughs> per window. They're not that big. I looked at the pictures. I got windows, you know, three times that size that were about $900. Uh, and Do you the, think perhaps, and maybe Hetty knows that there, if the historic design needs to be replicated, that I think window window bids can can vary a lot actually depending on the sill and mullion and the kind of treatment treat visual treatment of the surround for want of a better word. And the other nine hundred per window, Sam is yeah, that's kind of work a day. Thirty three hundred per window. How much? Three thousand three hundred dollars per window. Her window in the current, in the current right. decimal. Um, sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I I haven't. I don't know the details about the window treatments in terms of the proposal. I, is that still part of the um, bit the 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 ask at this point? That's my understanding. The windows. That's my understanding. I can't. I, I didn't get it. John's spreadsheet, but I believe it's included. Tim, you have a comment yes. on the windows? Yeah. Uh, I, did, I did have a comment. When we approve a project, uh, can we put some conditions on it? For example. Design uh, review. Pardon me? Yeah. Design review. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, that's not our. No, I know it's not our purview, but can't, can't we have them report back to the Historical Commission? Well, well, let it, well why don't we let Tim Sorry, finish I his thought? Sorry, I jumped Oh, it's been a doozy yeah. of a day. Sorry. <laughs> my, my my question is: This is a private uh, facility. It's a historic building in the town. Uh, I have some concern about public dollars going for private buildings, uh, and understand that one of the criteria is the his history of the building. So the building is historic. And so I would like to have some condition. I, I just wondered whether we could put on a condition that this be open to the public and not just used for private purposes. Now, public is if someone goes into one of the psychologist's offices, I guess that's public, but uh, I, I don't know how one does that. If we're going to approve all this money for this private entity, can we put some kind of a restriction on that? And then the second one is sort of related to my question regarding the signage, and that is, whether or not it would be helpful to have the town of Amherst have some sign that the CPA monies were used for because of historic purposes or something like that. Uh, just so if people know it's a private entity and question why public dollars went for a private use, there's some greater understanding. So 
but that's sorry, but those, those were some of the questions I had. All right, I, that's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer, and then Hetty will correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. That the the public benefit, um, of that the what the public receives from giving CPA money to a private historic building, privately owned, is the view from the outside. It is not any access <laughs> to the interior. It's because it is part of the historic landscape. So it would not be, uh, I'm not sure it would even be allowed for us to demand that the public be allowed inside the building. Since okay. what we are funding is improvements to the preservation of the exterior. We are okay. not funding interior painting for that same reason. That's because the public doesn't benefit from painting on the inside. Eddie? Sounds about right, Sarah. Yeah. And okay, this I was also part of a historic district too of East Am East Amherst. Right. So there and are two as, ways in which it it is, you know, legitimate. Andy, public view, and it's part of a historic district, and the public enter the building um, if they choose to for appointments um, and meetings in the building. And I think when we listen to the presenters um the who work there they said that there were a fair number of kids from the school nearby who also have used this building inside so I, i'm i'm less concerned about about that but i appreciate where you're coming from thank you andy yeah i just wanted to follow on on to sam's point i think it's a very good one relative to the windows i've been, and i've been like trying to find their budget worksheet here and haven't so just, I guess, as a reminder, in terms of the, so um, when they, when we award money, um, what level of further documentation do they need to provide relative to how the money has been spent? Because, um, yeah, I, I, I think the 3000 per window, if there's 13 windows, if that's, you know, if you can get that for a thousand, that's like an extra 25 grand, which covers off on some of these projects alone here, right? So I, I would love to have uh, at least maybe clarity on, on how they document how the money is spent. And then, um, you know, in this particular case, like I, 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 would be, I would be curious to know if we, you know, I, I, would, I would probably be supportive knowing what Sam has shared of reducing that number down and reclaiming some of that for us. Uh, well, I, I would remind everyone that these are, um, in every case, their maximum amounts and, it, and the projects are reimbursed. And Sonia and her team, I believe, scrutinized the invoices. Um, More than most people they don't like, get the yes. money. They don't get the money up front. <laughs> What's that, Sonia? More than most people like, yes. But yeah. this also gets, um, it goes through um, the liaison for the historic committee too. So he goes through them, there'll be um, uh, restrictions of some sort that'll get put on. So, and then when it comes down to the accounting office, we look at it to make sure it's kind of in the scope of the project and an allowable use for CPA. Those are the things we're looking at, but it gets scrutinized on many levels at town hall before it gets reimbursed. And there's an agreement in place before the project started. Okay, it's reimbursed to the total cost or reimbursed to like the line item spends, I guess too, right? So are you saying like, we're just adding Some, up all the receipts to make sure they don't exceed 241 or are you actually going through and, and saying, hey, they saved money here and they exceeded their budget. I'm sorry for getting into the weeds here, but this is, this is an interesting topic. Um, I'm not sure if the if um, the second floor does that. We don't. We make sure they're allowable uses. We don't track line item by line item. That's usually done through the. Okay. Thanks, Sonia. Yep. Hey, Katie. Sorry, um, couldn't find my mute button there. Um, I feel a little funny, and maybe I missed something that was sent out, but if we're making are we guessing about these things like I was Sam I was thinking about 
is labor included in that? Are, is it the trim and the sills and other things? I mean, windows themselves might cost a certain amount. So I, ju I just feel like maybe we could put a condition on or something, but I, I feel funny making a decision about what we think might be the case. And if it's, unless I miss something where we've seen the line items. I believe it was I, in last, last week's packet that Sean had the- uh, The updated right numbers? Yep. Okay. I don't that. think I don't Thank think you. we know enough to to put conditions on particular aspects of purchasing of a construction project. I, I don't think that's you know we ask them to get the bids um, and we vote a total project cost. Basically, I, I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think we have the. I know nothing about windows, <laughs> Sarah. Just say yeah. Last week I asked the question when Sean said he went through the line item budget and I said, have we vetted this? You know, we don't know if it brings down the total cost of the construction manager. Like we we don't know. So this was Sean's best guess at like taking out chunks, but we never went back to the grant the the um, group. You know, this owner to say, can you redo a budget that would meet? this amount of money. So I think we should be careful that if we, whatever money we vote on, we don't know if they will be able to accomplish all that they've proposed in that budget. I'm not sure what practical effect that has on what we do tonight. Are you saying? I'm just saying that 241 was Sean's best guess. Mm -hmm. um, so to Katie's question, we didn't miss anything. The group, they have, we have, didn't go back to them and say, rerun a budget. Right. So we could give them 241 and it sounds like Sean, Sam built it up to 241 too. But again, we just don't know. You can't just take things off of a construction budget and assume it's the same amount. Um, well, as I recall, they had uh, bids from many different contractors, so I, I expect there is a fair degree of just adding it up. They don't have it; don't seem to have a general contractor. Um, it's also the case that they can come and ask for more next year. <laughs> you know, I think I I can't believe that they couldn't get an awful lot of work done for two hundred forty one thousand dollars. So. You know, I think we just have to go, we have to decide based on <clears throat> the information in front of us. Sam? Yeah, so I was halfway through, I started with the window expense. It's actually 12 windows, not 13. And the other point I wanted to bring up was the dormer replacement uh, expense, which would be the trim. And it references it specifically in the items to be completed and in their pictures. That's Eighty thousand uh, dollars. So they, you know, they're allocating one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the dormers and the inclusive of the windows. Um, I understand Sarah E's point uh, regarding uh, being careful about what we're, uh, you know, exactly what we're referencing. I'm comfortable from my uh, experience and recommendations, simply making a comment on it, uh, having knowledge of the industry and and. But in terms of the committee here, my comments are just for my general posture is that we have flexibility. Uh, applicants can always come back. And if I see estimates that are detailed in any particular project that, you know, seem like a lot to me, I feel an obligation to speak about it uh, I think, and I bring this up in the context that we're discussing budgets with a deficit so if we're seeking to shave off money from our total allocation there's a couple of projects in this total mix where there might be some opportunities and I would suggest this is one that there could be some saving I'm not suggesting massive amounts but in the two items that I'm looking at related to the windows and dormers, I see some saving. They had an estimate for the windows of between 30 or $40,000 in their own submittal from La Liberty, 30,000 being the lower, 40,000 being the higher. So there's a $10,000 swing there. 
So again, for the committee, I'm raising this topic just to consider the capacity to have flexibility in their own, each committee member's decision-making process regarding the budget. Hey, Tim? Um, I have a uh, compromise request. I propose that we reduce the 241.915 to 240 even. And my rationale is that's the amount that the historic uh, commission, commission recommended. And it does reduce it a little bit to get to Sam's point and it is a round number. And that's what I would propose. Um, that motion sure to lower your hand. Uh, so I move that it moved the number be reduced from 241,915 to 240,000 even uh, with the rationale that that's the amount of money that the historic commission recommended. And I think uh, I would feel more comfortable with going with a number that the historic commission recommended without getting into all this weed discussion. So that's my proposal or move. Uh, Recommendation. Well, I don't want to have two votes. So um, would you raise your hand if you object to that? Just indicate if you object. I don't see. All right. So I, I have a question before we vote. OK. Since the time we're discussing the project, yep, yep. Uh, the question is, are we voting on the assumption that uh, this is our response to their proposal? or are we voting on the assumption that this is a phased in portion of the proposal? I see a distinction there. I know, I have my own posture on that, but just- Well, we're that. not, we're not, I, I- In other words, we're voting, this is our response to your proposal. This is the amount we'll provide to you. Yes, and you will work out with the accounting department what <laughs> CPA okay. funds can be, okay. can be applied to. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a phase. There is no, they haven't. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and just put 240 even there, please, Sonia. All right. And then let's just proceed with a vote. Will somebody, Tim, you want to move that? I move 240 even. Yeah. Oh. To the Conkey Stevens house. Seconded. Right. Okay, Hetty, thank you. All right, let's vote. Anna? Oh, I hate being first every time. Uh, oh. Yes, it's okay. No, I'll I'll suck it up. Nope, Sarah, I will suck it up. It's okay. <laughs> well, on council, they start, you know, you'll get- No, she, she promised me she would change it up every time. Uh, yes, I'm saying yes. Okay, Sarah Eisinger. I'm saying uh, yes. Oh, sorry, Hetty? Yes. Andy? Hi. Sam? Yes. Annie, yes. Tim? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Katie? Yes. All right, next time I am going to start with Sarah Isinger, just so you know. Really okay, Sarah. Right. <laughs> no, I think it's good practice. I'm, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. So, Simeon Strong House and Grounds as requested 18,000, uh, this is the um, Amherst Historical Society requested $18,800 to conduct an engineering and structural assessment of that historic property. And they would like to do it before the Jones Library construction begins and possibly maybe garage construction. I move we approve the uh, Simeon Strong House and Grounds Engineering Study for $18,800. Second. All right. So now, is there any discussion? I guess <laughs> usually the discussion is to follow, but does anybody want All to right. make a Excuse comment? Me. Who was the second? Katie. Katie, thank you. All right. I see no one wishing to comment. So let's vote starting, Sonia, with Sarah Isinger. Yes. Yes. All right. Hetty. Yes. Andy? Aye. Sam? Yes. I am a yes. Tim? Yes. Dave? Yes. Katie? Yes. And Anna? Yes. 
All right, super. All right, now to the Alice Maud Hills House. This is the Amherst Women's Club requesting $135,000 for repairs um, uh, to various parts of the house and some exterior painting. Now, I don't know if everyone saw that Sonia sent some information on the painting question. Um, did anyone not get a chance to read that? Okay, Sonia, would you summarize what, what you were told? Here, are you able to do that? Um, yes, I think it falls under the rehab rehabilitation portion of it because there are repairs being made. So when they paint, after repairs being made, they consider that rehabilitation and preservation. <clears throat> if they were, or the other way painting would fall is if they were bringing the color back to period color, they could do that. Right. They couldn't paint it just any color, that would be just regular maintenance. And once this rehabilitation has been done and they repaint it, they couldn't come back a year or two later saying they need to put another coat of paint on because that would be routine maintenance. But because they're doing repairs, they, the painting falls under CPA. Is allowed, except um, that, and this was Stuart um, Saginaw's uh, response, right? He suggested, mm -hmm. as I think others had last week, that the carriage house would not be eligible for painting because it did not need any repairs. Right. So right. does anyone recall the cost of, <laughs> of that painting? Because we should just remove that from the total. That was about 19,000, I think. 19,500. Thank you. Oh, that'd be like 17,500, is that right? 19,500. No, I'm, what the, sorry, what, 1,000? I'm trying to subtract that. 117,500, is that right? Well, the thing is the, the full cost of the project is 166. So 30,000 they are going to pay for. Oh. So if they paid for the carriage house out of that 30,000, I just wanna make that clear. It's up to the committee if they wanna reduce it more, but. As long as we think there is an equivalent amount an additional amount of they couldn't use CPA dollars to paint the carriage house. No, I'm right, and I'm saying if their funds go to that, is there an equivalent um, additional cost on the main house that CPA can fund? I think if we were no, the whole project was one sixty six. If you reduce nineteen five from the one sixty six, that's the if we, if the committee deems that the carriage house is not eligible, then that would be the portion for discussion purposes. In other words, 147.5, if the 166 is accurate, would be uh, the amount less than 19.5 to- They're covered, but they're covering- And, then they're, and that 30. takes us to what I said, one, yeah, 117.500. But Sonia's suggesting that we could award them the same amount, they just can't use that any part of that on the carriage house. Andy? Correct. I am fully on board with Sonia. I don't think we change this number at all. The money goes towards the ineligible stuff. They do their whole project and, and I'm comfortable with the 135. I'm happy to make a motion for it. Sam, are you, I, Andy, was that a motion? <laughs> okay, I, I'll take that I, as a motion. I was, I, if you, I don't know if you want to like invite like me. To, I, yes, okay. if you invite me to, I will. I will make a motion All that right. we move forward at the 135 level. Seconded. Uh, Eddie is seconded. Does that mean discussion is truncated? No, we can discuss more now. Usually, you have the motion. You second the motion, and then you discuss it. So it's fine. I always Sam. want to hear what you have to say, Sam. Yeah. I, I've never in my life painting for. 10 years and running businesses paid $120,000 to paint a house. Now, I'm not the one, uh, it's not my house that I'm paying for personally, but it is our town. So I feel a lot of responsibility to uh, raise issues that I'm cognizant of for uh, the committee to consider. Um, it, it's a lot, uh, the, the painting component. 
Uh, and re regarding Stewart's comments, I read the letters. It seems to me his summary was twofold that it, uh, the carriage house would not qualify. The rest of it would qualify as a part of a rehabilitation, but they don't provide an answer as to exactly what portion of a budget that means. So in most of the definitions of the letters, the discussion of painting in the two state letters from the DOR that were provided by Sonia, uh, they're referring to a much lower dollar amount of painting as a component of a project and discussing whether or not that qualifies. In this case, it's the opposite. Uh, the vast majority of this project is painting and that's what I was raising before. So I love the house. I'd like to see them rehabilitated. I just, I'm not comfortable with the dollar amount because of what I know. I would say that we don't know <laughs> until they start inspecting the siding, mm -hmm. what the extent of the repairs would be and the necessary. Yeah. The repairs are $52,000. It's but, specific in the estimate. The painting specific in the estimate is one hundred and twenty thousand. I know, but once you start, once you start scraping, <laughs> scraping away or whatever, tapping on the boards, right? They could. That's not repairing. That's painting. Tim. Well, the painting for the house itself is a hundred. The carriage house is twenty. Correct. And okay, just for the record, it's it, it, just looking at their proposal. Everything else is repaired. Um, That's correct. Okay. Well, we have a motion seconded. Anna? Okay. I just have a clarifying question, and I apologize. This is strictly because I'm not fast enough. They had an estimate on this painting from someone who does this work, correct? One estimate. So, I mean, I think for me, I get very uh, squeamish speculating when they actually did speak to someone who does this work and that's the estimate they got. And I mean, Sam, I say that with all due respect because I recognize you used to do this work, but for me, you know, they, they did their due diligence of getting the quote. And if they get another estimate and it comes in less, you know, great, then they'll give us back what they didn't spend. But for me, I think I want to trust that they did their due diligence and they got a quote on this. And for me, that's, that's where I'm, I'd like to stick with instead of, under undercutting just because we think right we didn't go out and do the estimates um actually I, did, but I, I understand <laughs> any other comments then let's vote on awarding one hundred thirty five thousand dollars to the amherst women's club for exterior repairs and painting for the alice maud hills house exclusive of the carriage house all right, and I believe we're starting now with Hetty. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Andy. Aye. Sam. I'm going to abstain. I mean, okay, so uh, it's a A is abstain. Um, yes, I'm a yes. Tim. Yes. Dave. Yes. Katie. Yes. And Anna? Yes. And Sarah? Me, yes. All right. So we have, we already voted down the North Cemetery fence, and we have voted in favor of the Mill River Historic Interpretive Trail pending confirmation of its eligibility. If it is not deemed eligible, that award will be rescinded or or will will withdraw it before council votes sarah yes quick question mm -hmm. um uh robin was asking whether she could um make some comments um after deliberations after sure yeah i think so if it's not super late <laughs> she must have missed the public comment period um all right, so in that case, we move on to the town of Amherst's request for $50,000 to uh, replace a fence at the West Sarah, Cemetery. Yes? I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, could you let David Zomek speak? On oh, the, I'm sorry. Uh, Didn't trail? see that. I'm scrutinizing the spreadsheet here. Dave, go ahead. I'm sorry, Sarah, were you not going to? Uh... 
discuss the uh, North Amherst Trail now? Did you punt that or, or are you going to talk about it? We did last time. Oh, okay. And you voted it, but it was pending uh, information from town council. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. Um, so yeah, if I could, um, just to report to the to the committee, and oftentimes, you know, we work together, you know, Sonia, Sean Mangano and myself. And so we did have a, a lengthy conversation with uh, our town attorney, uh, Sharin Everett, who works for Copeland and Page. She is very experienced with CPA proposals and works with many, many other communities throughout the Commonwealth. And um, uh, I actually started the conversation because I had, you know, just thought a little bit more about the trail in question, the trail that is the focus of this proposal. And, you know, really with my, from my perch here, as I oversee all the conservation land, I think it's clear to everybody on the committee and, and the proponents that, you know, this is a trail that is uh, already protected land. And, and there is no question that the resources that are being discussed in this proposal and, and proposed to be researched are historic in nature. Uh, we described the proposal to Sharin Everett and, um, you know, she thought uh, really without without hesitation that this proposal uh, was a um, an eligible expense. Uh, the one thing that I think Sonia and I brought up during the conversation is that the District 1 Neighborhood Association is not a nonprofit. It, it, it's I don't really I don't know its legal status. I think it's kind of an informal group. But um, in essence, if the committee and and ultimately the council decides to fund this, it would be it would really be staff working with representatives of that group to move this project forward. The land is the towns, right? We we own the land. The conservation commission oversees the land. You know, I work with, closely with the commission. So essentially, the town would work with the representatives of the District 1 uh, neighborhood group on this proposal. We would put out an RFP for those services. It can't be sole source to somebody. So I, I hope that gives you a little bit um, you know, broader understanding, but there's no question that it is eligible. So just for the record, because I <laughs> mentioned a different project, you were talking about the District 1 Neighborhood Associations request for $12,900. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. That... That's okay. That's okay. Just so just so anyone watching is not confused. All right. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Can we assume that the town is willing to put in the staff work to make that happen? Yes, it really. And, and I covered that with Sharin. You know, the more I think about that trail and those mills along the Cushman Brook, we really, I think it's our obligation to try to protect those resources. And part of that protection comes from research, education, outreach, and ultimately signs and or some sort of demarcation that people should not be removing stones, they should not be digging in those areas, all those things we know about archaeological sites throughout the world. So uh, I think we've all visited those and, and um, we really should. I think it's great that the District 1 folks brought this to our attention. And um, I think it'll be a nice addition to, you know, uh, the Cushman and the and the uh, it's the Kevin Flood Trail, which is uh, north and upstream of Puffer's Pond. So okay. thanks. Thank you. Um, so j comments just on this project now, the Mill River. Uh, yes, Anna. So Dave, um, just to confirm, have you talked with the representatives from Dona about that? about the town being the, the folks responsible, putting out RFPs, et cetera, et cetera? Um, we just met with Sharon Everett okay. on Zoom, I think yesterday. So I have not, and I don't think Sonia has time to circle back to them. I mean, this is, it's it's analogous to the Amherst Baseball Leagues wanting to um, put in new dugouts at Mill River. We own the land, it'll be our resource. Um, so. So that's why the town would need to, to do an official process to seek a researcher to do this background research and, and anything moving forward. I can't yeah. imagine they would object. I, I agree with that. I think I just, you know, I wanna make sure that they know what we are agreeing to, right? Um, and then my second question is along that, when you look at this budget, um, does it still seem in line for you? When you look at that, the, the what is it, 12 night, yeah. 12,900. Like 12, Does that still seem in line with you if, if this moves forward through the town? Well, 
it's going to have to be right. I'm not an expert on archaeological research by any means, so I presume that don't I, I? I know the folks who are behind this proposal, and I trust their judgment and their research, and I'm quite sure they got estimates for this work, and that's where the uh, the 12,900 uh, uh, came from. Perfect. Thank you. Tim? Uh, that actually was going to be my comment. I do not think they got estimates. I think they're using one person and uh, they are not getting estimates. Uh, so I guess in reading the eligibility requirements, I don't <coughs> not, we don't require applicants to get multiple estimates for project costs, do we? Or is it just a recommendation? Because in this case, they only have one. And that's that history, the gentleman who talked. They right. didn't have any, they didn't have multiple estimates. So I don't know if that's- well, I, Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure that's, I'm not sure that's a concern. Okay. I mean, I think because it's not, you know, they're seeking expert assistance. Like they'll 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 get as much expert assistance as they can afford, right? So whatever their budget is, they'll get that much consultation. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't want to put Sonia on the spot, but I wonder if um, if Sonia uh, has had a chance to consider the, I mean, what Dave has told us and is satisfied or, about the project eligibility or are there still questions to investigate? Because, yeah, I just don't um, know. I just I'm don't fine know. with it once we've talked with the attorney and I know that the attorney didn't hesitate. I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, it then would be the attorney that would defend us if we had an <laughs> issue. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we no longer have any concern about the eligibility of this Mill River Historic Interpretive Trail or this phase one, at least. Tim? Yeah, yeah, since I'm writing the minutes, I just wanted to know what to reflect regarding the eligibility. Are we going to say that uh, the town consulted with the attorney and the attorney uh, made the determination that this was eligible? Because I think this is important enough to put in the minutes. Yes. Is that a fair statement? Yes. OK. Dave, I don't know if you got it in the form of an opinion, you know, a formal you know, no, opinions. How, how this is documented. <laughs> is this just a conversation, or was there an email trail to? No, the, yeah, the, essentially, the more you ask for from town attorney, more. the more it costs the town. So. Opinions are expensive. Um, I, I think when uh, my hope is when the comptroller, the assistant town manager, and the finance director all talk with Sharin Everett, uh, our, our town attorney, one of our town attorneys, and an expert on land use and CPA, um, if that can be reflected in the minutes, that is enough to give Sonia confidence and hopefully all of you confidence to move forward with this project. And again, we would have a we would have a, a, a project agreement with that group, but essentially uh, probably Ben Brager, who is the planner uh, and works with the Historical Commission would be the liaison on this project. And he would uh, he would oversee any kind of uh, RFP that went out. And uh, uh, perhaps, you know, the, the gentleman who did consult with them on this project uh, would be free to uh, apply uh, and put in a proposal. And I think I would suggest that at this point, the committee assumes the project is in fact eligible. And unless somebody tells us otherwise, <laughs> we need to come back to this, we can, um, uh, yeah, affirm, aff affirm it as a recommendation of ours. Okay, well, that's good news. All right, so back to the West Cemetery fence and sign improvements. Um, does anybody want to make a comment? Sam? Uh, I would just make a comment following up on your inquiry when we discussed this, Sarah. Uh, you mm -hmm. asked about the references to signage in the murals and suggested that we not use funds for that aspect of it. Uh, so, uh, whether it be a request to not reference them or to eliminate that component from the project. So 
uh, it might be in our interest to identify what the expenses associated with those signs that are in question. I don't know that we need to identify them. I think we can say if, let's say we do approve it um, uh, with, with um, and tell the applicant <laughs> that fund, CPA funds cannot be used to okay. promote a work of art. You know, it's just that would not to us be an eligible expense. There, there may be minimal cost. I don't know, but whatever it is, that Sonia's office will figure that out. And I see Ben Drager in, <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Welcome, Ben. Hi, thanks, Sarah. Um, I don't want to complicate things too much. I, I guess I, in this case, am the project, in the, am the applicant. Um, I guess I was imagining these signs, like, say, there's one next to Emily Dickinson's grave with a his interpretive sign about Emily Dickinson. Could I? Could we include a picture of her face on the mural that's right there, um, as like an indication of like you know a, a the mural is reflected. Um, you know the mural reflects the history of Amherst, which is in plain sight it, it, at West okay. Cemetery. So I think that that's what I was imagining was kind of using signage to uh, help people understand interpret West Cemetery and how it's reflected in the mural and the kind of interplay between those two. I, I wasn't imagining it like explicitly signage about the mural itself. So if that, that helps or yes, complicates that does, things, I'm not sure. That does help me. Yeah, I don't think a sign that, that explains the mural to people and where it comes from and you know what it's, yeah, I don't think that I would not consider that eligible. Does anyone else uh, have a question about that for Ben? All right, then. Um, why don't I move this one? Uh, the move that we award $50,000 to the town of Amherst for construction of a historically accurate fence at the West Cemetery on the Eastern uh, boundary, I believe. And uh, signage. Second. Okay, let's begin vote then. If there are no more comments, wave your hand if you had a comment. Sorry, I had my hand, was, my head down. Was that Anna second? It, Anna, yeah, it was me. Okay, sorry, Anna, thank you. Okay, all right, no comments. All right, then let's vote, beginning with Andy. Aye. <clears throat> Sam? Aye. I'm an aye. Tim? Uh, I, but could you come back to the, the uh, last vote after we finish this vote? Okay. Dave? Aye. Katie? Yeah. Aye. Anna? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Hetty? Aye. Aye. Okay, Tim, what is your question? Uh, the last one, the interpretive trail that vote happened last meeting yes yes okay so the minutes for this meeting will confirm the vote from last meeting well you could just say that that dave zomek you know with respect to that project previously voted oh dave zomek explained you. about it's the eligibility suggestion. yeah so okay. it's not that we affirmed okay. the vote it wasn't that we affirmed the vote i think we affirmed that that it's eligible okay thank you all right, next request is $150,000 for trail improvements at the Hickory Ridge Recreation Area, assuming we get to own it someday at long last. Soon. Um, Katie, I see your hand is up. Sarah, thank you. I just had a question sort of process for the group. Um, I'm okay dipping into reserves and going to the, you know, the 91, uh, but if we need to shave because the rest of the group feels strongly not to do that, then I would vote for a different amount for this particular project or perhaps others coming up. So I just, I feel I would be fine with um, dipping into reserves, but I just, if others feel differently, I'd like to know that now. Mm -hmm. 
Would anyone like to suggest a different amount for this project? Would anyone like to make a comment about this project? I thought I'd seen Anna's hand up for a moment, but. Uh, I just was gonna reaffirm that the Conservation Commission is supportive of this full allocation. All right, then um, who would like to move, make a motion? I would love to. <laughs> uh, I, I move that we allocate $150,000 to the town of Amherst for Hickory Ridge trail improvements. Is there a second? Sam is the second, all right, Anna and then Sam. All right, and we will begin the vote with Sam McLeod. Yes. I am a yes. Tim? Yes. Dave? Yes. Katie? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Anna? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Hetty? Yes. And Andy? Aye. Um, all right, next we have pickleball courts and not specifically at Mill River, if we proceed at, at the town's request. Um, so the request is made by a private group. So similar to the Mill River Historic Trail, um, it, it pertains to a town asset. So it would be managed by the town and the town would own it. Um, would anyone first like to suggest a different amount? We'll I don't see anyone racing to do that. All right, so is, uh, would someone, I, will, I would like to move this one on behalf of the Recreation Commission. I would like to move that CPA award $120,000 uh, to construct pickleball courts at a location to be determined by the town. Seconded. Anyone want to say something about pickleball? Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, if we are determining, my question may be, may be moot and that might be the answer you give me and I'm fine with that. Um, mm -hmm. If the town needs to determine a site for this, is that gonna add to the cost exponentially? And the reason I'm asking that is I looked at Northampton CPA, they allocated 13,000 just for siting um, for pickleball specifically. And so I just wanted to check in with that in terms of potential added costs. Dave Zomek can speak to that. Sure, um, that's a great question, Anna. Um, and, and I think I've, I've spoken to this at two previous meetings. Basically, I think, you know, uh, the 120, is what it is that was an estimate based on i believe three courts at mill river and that location we're saying you know we are supportive recreation is supported dpw is supported planning of supportive of this of this proposal um i think what we need to keep in mind is if the site changes you know we can do we can do some of the work our dpw our planning department etc if the site changes we may not get three courts it might be two depending on what is decided we just don't know at this point so and there may be some other costs associated with it there could be surveying costs or there could be drainage costs whatever we don't know that yet because we haven't done the due diligence so i think you know my recommendation would be you support 120,000 for the development and construction of 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 one one to three or you know or, or pickleball courts in at a recreation area in amherst and i wouldn't even maybe designate the number because we just don't know if it's a different site it it might be two you know thanks so, sorry to make you repeat yourself Apologies. Oh, that's okay all good Sam? i recall dave uh, williams comment from the other week about uh north amherst being on the move uh, a number of our attention and that maybe we add that referencing that, you know, that would be a great site or, uh, to start with. That's just a thought in the motion, but uh, I, I appreciated his comment and perhaps we include that in the motion. I, I understand what you're getting at. I don't, I don't want to seem to be 
direct, you know, like twisting DPW's arm about finding a location. You know, they need to find what's appropriate and suitable. But yeah, Katie. Yeah, the only thing I just would add, Dave said, you know, um, there was so much support for this. Letters, emails, um, people who were speaking in public comment. So, you know, if it if they want three courts and it costs a little bit more, I bet you there'll be some folks who'd be willing to pitch in. So I just add that to the mix. Thank you for that reminder. All right, then let's proceed to a vote and Sarah, do I what, go first or I'm sorry Tim can, what exactly is the motion is it to approve 120,000 for pickleball, pickleball courts, courts uh, site to be the location of which to be determined by the town of Amherst yes okay yes Katie do you have another question your hands are still up okay oh, I'm sorry so who voted first last time? Was it Sam? Your turn. All right, so it's my turn. So I get to vote yes. Lead off with a yes. Tim. Uh, yes. Dave. Williams. Yes. Katie. Yes. Anna. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Eddie. Yes. And Andy. Yes. All right. We are Sam. making good. We, You've oh, Sam. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, that would be a yes. That was <laughs> just a lag. Um, this is we're making good progress, but we didn't take any break last time, and I said we would take a break this time. So, unless you really want to just keep going with no break, why don't we come back in five minutes? Okay. Is that all right? I would suggest you turn off your video and mute yourself until you come back. All right. All right, see you shortly. I guess at, I don't have a functioning watch, um, 
I got boosted today and I am not in fighting form. It's hitting me. Well, I don't know if that's any consolation. I was boosted about two weeks ago, it lasted one day, the, the crappy feeling. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what yeah. my second shot was like. It was one one day and then better, you know, not even a full day, but I, I was not, yeah, yeah. Not, not in tip top shape in this exact moment. I'm hoping it shakes by tomorrow morning. We'll see. All right, is Hetty out there? Yes, I am. Great, thanks. Andy out there. There he is. So we keep all our members here. One, two, three. Yes, okay, super. Um, let's continue then. Next is the request from the town of Amherst for uh, fun Sarah, to, yes, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt. We yes. also have an update on the North Amherst Community Farm. Um, on the know. eligibility of that one? Right. That one was not eligible. Okay. Um, uh -huh. so, I don't know if Dave's on or not, if he wants to update, but basically, the it wasn't a problem with it being an APR or the structure itself, it was the problem of deconstructing a barn. <clears throat> That is not eligible for CPA funding. Sorry. <laughs> so this could be, do you wanna you know, talk to Dave? Do you want me to add? I'm sorry, sure. I, I would just jump back in my chair. Um, so yeah, so again, we spoke with the town attorney about this at some length. As Sonia stated, uh, town attorney did not think deconstructing the barn was eligible. However, constructing a pavilion is eligible if the project can meet some other criteria such as um, it is on an APR so we would we're, we're a co-holder of the APR the town would need to work with the applicant and the APR program to make sure that a structure like a pavilion can be built on the APR and and again that may be possible and then we'd need to also make sure that the public, we'd secure access to the pavilion. In other words, there needs to be kind of a long-term agreement that the public can get to the pavilion that is funded by CPA dollars, and that's doable. And um, uh, the thought was we could do that through a memorandum of understanding with North Amherst Community Farm and the uh, Simple Gifts Farm uh, Farmers. So bottom line is we think you know, the pavilion is eligible to construct, but the, the applicant, the way they structured it to take the, use the, the CPA dollars to deconstruct a historic barn is not an eligible use of CPA funds. 
So if they flip their their funding sources, then the town and the town attorney thought this was a fundable project. Does Thank that you. make sense? Yes, and I asked them that specific question and Bruce declined that option. I mean, he hadn't heard yet what you've just <laughs> said, mm -hmm. but they did not wish, to, they wanted the CPA money first because that would help them raise the funds for then the construction. So, um, so I'll let others speak and then I would maybe have a, have a more to say. Andy. Thanks, Sarah, uh, and thanks for the extra info on that, uh, David. I, you know, if they did do the reversal, I would be supportive of it. You know, I, I think you asked the right question, Sarah. I was going to remind folks that you did. Um, hopefully, they can find a way to uh, to make that work in the in the reverse order. Thanks, Tim. Was the question for historic purposes or for recreation? Because I still don't see this as a recreation. Uh, it was um, requested under the recreation category. Okay, was that what the attorney's opinion was? It was not eligible be, as a recreation <clears throat> request or just general CBA request? Right? It, would, it wouldn't have been eligible under either. Destruct oh, either. Okay. Deconstructing the bar would not have been eligible under either historic or okay. recreation. Okay. So I think what I would propose is that we reject it, um, but then communicate everything the town has learned <laughs> um, and invite them, I mean, to say we would be happy to receive a proposal in the next cycle. Um, but I don't, we, I don't think we can com basically completely rewrite their proposal for them if they had already, in fact, declined this idea. So does anybody want to suggest a different approach? Sam? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dave. Let, go I was ahead. just going to say, I, I, I have not had a chance to talk to Bruce. Um, I just like to maybe have an offline conversation with him just just about whether they truly have, have fully and completely explored you know flipping this because i i do agree with with uh, andrew and other folks on the on the call i think the, the generally the committee was supportive of the of the idea of this pavilion and its function for north amherst community farm and and the greater community that uses the farm it's just like it's similar uh tim to putting up a pavilion at groff park although it's a private piece of property but as long as we got the access agreement secured then then that's the public investment so if the committee would either table a vote or maybe still keep your vote contingent upon um contingent upon staff talking to the applicant and seeing if we can convince them to flip the the fundraising i would just love that opportunity to speak with bruce and i could probably do it tomorrow and get you some feedback so, so that the would be... so the contingency would be um that the cpa funds only be used for construction and perhaps any the legal legal costs associated with um getting the the, the rights to access or whatever um, that, so would that be completely changing their proposal though? Well, that's what. <laughs> so I, I suggest that um, you defer it until they're ready. If they want to come back with the proposal to construct the pavilion and flip it, then if we have a budgeted reserve, they can come back to us and do that. And it can be, it can be done at that time. The key is having a budgeted oh. reserve. Yeah. Katie? I, I was just curious, um, I was following you, Sarah, and your proposal of, you know, rejecting it and asking for, um, I just wasn't, I was wondering if we could have another possible round in the spring, um, you know, for invitation or something like that based on some, one of this or the track or the, um, you know, other things that might come up. Um, as opposed to waiting until next year, which would then make them wait for the following year for funding. Mm 
Um, so that's an amended amendment to your proposal. Well, um, I expect that we'll be meeting in January and we'll, we'll get to when our next meeting is, but we, we are going to need to meet to talk about the track <laughs> and it's not going to be in December. So I'm guessing January and maybe if, if we agree, I think we would need to rescind this, the vote we took last week, right? So that basically we have no position on it. We have not voted on it and table it um, and see if they can submit a new proposal. In so that's different than rejecting it, tabling it. Yes. Right? So that we yes. can consider it at a future meeting yes. of this year. Great. I like that. If it, if I like, I like it thinks they can speak that quickly. What, Hetty? I like that too. I feel like we've um, brought this organization along with us back and forth, back and forth. And I um, would like us to leave some room. Okay. Sam? <clears throat> I think it'd be great if. Dave were able to provide any further information and communication uh, with the applicants uh, for us. And I would be, as I am, and as I was in our prior vote, I'd be in favor of uh, awarding funds where there a way for it to qualify. And I would like to see that happen. Okay, Tim? Um, I feel comfortable with that, although when we contact them, I would like more specificity about the cost they're requesting. This cost was a, just a, an estimate of 25,000 out of what they determined to be a $95,000 total project. And I just never got the specificity. So if they come back with a different proposal, I would like to have more specificity regarding what actual dollar amount they're asking for. All right, then what I, I, I'm going to offer a motion and we'll see if anybody seconds it. And it has two parts. One that we rescind our vote on the North Amherst Community Farm request <coughs> for $25,000 and that we table that proposal. All right, would anyone like to second that? And would you repeat? Would you repeat your motion yes. again? Sure. That we rescind our approval, our seven to two vote in favor of the farm and trailhead pavilion, because we voted that last week. So that we rescind that and table the project. Right. That we're just taking no action. So that we will have yeah. taken no vote, and we're not going to vote on it tonight. If I understand correctly, Sarah, that means that we can vote on it at any point in time in the future if we wish and we have not rejected it. It's a yes. mechanism for leaving the door open for them to come back to us. Exactly. Yeah. Tim? Oh, sorry. I had oh, my... All right. <laughs> and did you get that motion? Yes. Well, yes. The only concern I had was in the motion will reason let's see the proposal the table are we we're tabling because we're we're actually suggesting they come back with a different proposal right yes i don't think we, i don't think we need to say that in the motion we're going oh, to okay. table it it just Fair allows enough. us yeah it's just putting off our, it's just putting off our vote so i i have the two then yes okay no all right i'll second so, it if nobody else has okay <laughs> All right, then I'm going to start with, and Sonia, I don't know where you're going to record this. Maybe you just erase people's votes as we go. All right, so starting with Tim. Uh, and this is the line above your, your right. cursor, yes? I, no, no, okay. I approve, uh, I vote yes for both of your rescind and table. All right, thank you. Um, I guess you can't, so that's okay. one. <laughs> well, they, your motion was actually having two together. parts. So I, your motion had two parts. No, we're so. going, I just, sorry, two clauses. We're going to vote two it clauses. as one, two, right, so, one motion. All right. So I, I don't think I need to 
I don't think I need to record it on here because okay. we're not actually voting the project. All right. Well, I just need to keep track on my fingers. Right. So Tim is in favor. I vote in favor of your motion. Okay. Dave? Uh, I support it. Okay. Katie? Yes. Anna? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Hetty? Yes. Andy? Hi. Sam? Yes. And I'm a yes. All right. So that's all right. Well, Sonia, I think your note's ambiguous. We that we voted unanimously to rescind. And uh, I was just recording the vote that was there just so I can put oh, it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> all right. right. As long as Tim notes that the rescission right. Is, right. is unanimous. Okay. So that's just for me it? tomorrow. Okay. Can we leave it to Dave then to communicate with Bruce and uh yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they're able to revise their proposal. Okay. So now we can go to when Song is done typing. All right, to Plumbrook. The town is requesting $38,000 uh, to replace a well and make improvements to the irrigation system for the Plumbrook fields. And the, the project cost was modified because they don't need to buy or can't or don't need to buy water cannons. They already have one. No, it's a movable piece of equipment that isn't allowed. OK. Interesting. All right. <laughs> Does anyone have anything to say, Sam? Uh, yeah, I was at the board meeting yesterday for the soccer association there. They were very pleased to uh, be aware as a board, not just the president, that the town is considering this. Uh, they unanimously expressed support and um, are, are glad to hear uh, the benefits of the proposal and the fact that the town's represented it. Uh, I'd like to move to have the committee recommend that the town council award $38,000 for the Plumbrook irrigation improvements uh, relating to the water wall. I will second. Any more comments on this project? All right, then let's begin uh, take a vote, I think, beginning with Dave now, Dave Williams. Aye, uh, yes. Thank you. Katie? Yes. Anna? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Andy? Aye. Sam? Yes. I'm a yes. And Tim? Yes. All right, now we are postponing discussion of the track. Also, way, Sarah, there's an attendee who has a hand up. I don't know that you wish to call on them or not. Uh, I don't. It was, we already talked about it. Uh, she wants to talk at the end. It's Robin. Okay. Oh. All right, so we're not, we're tabling the high school track pending additional information from the town. All right, Crocker Farm Elementary School. As I recall, it was this, well, it was Sean who told us that the town slash school was modifying its request to be $50,000. And I think to allow for some design work, I think. Um, and yes. I think we could expect that we'll see the rest of the request next year, but I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Um, did I misspeak, Sonia? No, you were correct. OK. Does anybody want to speak about playground project? I move that we allocate $50,000 of CPA funding to the uh, Amherst Public Schools for the uh, planning for the Crocker Farm Elementary School play playgrounds. Thank you. Second that. Yeah. Sorry, who did? Katie's, I uh, second that. Thank you, all right. I, if there's any more comments, wave your hand quickly. 
All right, then let's be, let's start voting with Katie. Aye. Aye. Who did you say, Dave? No, 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 Katie, oh. you'll be last okay. this time. I'm changing the order. Anna? Aye. Sarah? I'm an aye, yes. Eddie? Aye. Andy? Aye. Sam? Yes. I'm a yes. Tim? Yes. And Dave? Yes. All right. Now, trail improvements. The town of Amherst is requesting $50,000 for trail improvements, generally as needed, and, and much work is needed on its trail network. This is all, excuse me, this also tends to be a recurring um, request. Uh, the, as I recall, the trails have been very heavily used during the pandemic and there's many bridges and bog bridges and other things that need to be done. I move we allocate $50,000 from FCPA funding to the town of Amherst for general trail improvements. Is there a sec? I will sec. All right, um, let's vote. Anna? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Eddie? Aye. Andy? Aye. Sam? Yes. I'm a yes. Tim? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Katie? Yes. All right. I think because I don't want to forget, we should just vote on the debt service. We do it as a bunch. You can see down in the corner of the blue, there's just one vote. <laughs> we just vote on the whole amount. It's a formality because the town is obligated, but um, we need to recommend to town council that they go ahead and pay, service the debt with CPA funds. CPA funds. And um, uh, Sonia, I don't actually see what that total is. It's $488,720. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions about the debt service? Okay. Um, would someone like to make the motion? I move that. Oh, oh, someone was coming in with a so moved, and I respect that. So I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> Well, who was that? I don't know so I'm ready. I'm ready the minute, so I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I'll second. I'll second. Who was right. the second? Me, Anna. Oh, I didn't see you on my screen. Okay. No worries. I will make myself known in some way. <laughs> Got it. All right. Any questions or comments on this? All right. Let's vote, starting with Sarah Isinger. Yes. Hetty. Yes. Andy. Aye. Sam. Yes. I'm a yes. Tim. Yes. Dave. Yes. Katie. Yes. Anna. Yes. Did I skip somebody? No. No. Oh, no. okay. It's just, all right. Wonderful. So given that we are not voting on the track. We are not voting on North Amherst Community Farm. We've rejected the North Cemetery. That leaves the Amherst Municipal Housing Trust request. Um, so we're down to being $67,000 in the hole. <laughs> um, remember, we have, we have reserves um, that can certainly cover that deficit and more, but we may have projects coming back to us like the North Amherst Community Farm. Um, we may hear yet from the reparations committee. Um, projects come up out of cycle. It, it's not infrequent. So I would not recommend that we, that we spend it all. Would anyone like to, let's see. Um, speak to a different number at this point, a number other, a grant other than $250,000. Sam? 
Um, yeah, when I originally wrote down dollar amounts for the projects, the number I had for this was 150. Uh, I'm fine with 250, although uh, my preference, uh, all things being equal, would be that we retain, that we not dip into the reserves. Uh, so I would advocate for an amount of 250 less the reserves and less 25,000 for the um, potential of the farm, which would, I believe, be 158,000. I'm sorry, I didn't follow that. Uh, You're saying how much of the- 250 less the reserve of 67, less $25,000 for the farm would be 158,000. That's what I would consider. I'm okay either way, but my preference would be to retain the reserves. The way, well, if we, if we, vo if we vote on a number that's larger than 66,894, we oh. can, we don't have to, we don't have to specify the amount. We can just say to be funded. I mean, we, we can say to be funded from reserves or to be funded in part from reserves, or maybe Sonia would have a recommendation. No, I understand. But Thank we you. can, let's, all right, we'll worry about <laughs> maybe how we phrase it after we settle on a number. So does anyone, so Sam would be happy with a smaller number. And I think I've said I would be happy with a smaller number. Does anyone else support a smaller number or, or not? Or is there, Tim? Um, I do not. I, I feel just very strongly that this the town needs to support housing. And uh, if we're talking about reducing numbers, I would not approve the, uh, the farm request. And I, I just don't feel comfortable reducing it, assuming the farm number might come back in the future somewhere. So I just don't feel comfortable with that right now. I'd stay with the 250. Andy? Stay with 250 as well. Do we have any other fans of 250? I agree with staying with, oops, sorry. Eh, there we go. Okay. Um, Anna? Yeah, well, I agree. Fans are popping up. Okay. Yes, Anna? Uh, I agree with staying with 250 and also noting, making sure that they know that it should they have an urgent request and need more funding, they can come back and, re and convene the, the committee. Yeah. They have done exactly that in the past. Um, and Dave Zomek is certainly well, well aware of that. Yeah. And if I could just throw something out uh -huh. there, um, uh -huh. we do have ARPA funding and I'm pretty sure some of this is slated for, for affordable housing projects. So just throw that out there. You mean that would go directly to the trust? No, that would go towards affordable housing development projects, which is in partnership with the trust anyways. But, but who would, it would just go to the town? I don't understand. So you're just suggesting that maybe they would not need to ask us, ask CPA for more money or that in fact, they might not even need this much money? I guess I'm suggesting if there was a time to scale it down, this would be a good year to do it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, Dave, Zomek. Sure, just to clarify on the ARPA funds, so there is in the in the town manager's ARPA plan, there is a million dollars for affordable housing generally. That would not be going to the trust, but the town would work collaboratively with the trust on, on opportunities. Um, I can't recall, maybe Sonia can, what the trust currently has in its um, you know, in its available fund balance. Is it a they have about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in there mm -hmm. now, plus a large encumbrance. Where if they weren't to use that encumbrance, it would go back into the balance. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. I I can say this, and and um, I can say that we're staff are working on a number of potential um, 
projects, although John, neither John nor I could speak specifically about them because they're just not ready for prime time. We have some interesting opportunities coming our way in 22. So I guess I would kind of just put that out there that um, it, there's going to be some things coming our way and potential land acquisitions that uh, not unlike Belchertown Road uh, will hopefully result in, in more units being built. Um, that RFP, as people know, uh, uh, was responded to, and uh, we're moving forward with with uh, the selection process for um, for developers uh, of the East Street School and Belchertown Road. So, um, so it's exciting to have that one moving forward. But we're getting ready. We want to get more in the pipeline. So, I just put it out there that there are things uh, brewing and percolating in a good way. So, thanks. thanks. What what I don't understand is what is the town thinking does the town have any specific plan for the million dollars of ARPA fund like is part of it to go towards this particular project well that we already voted the acquisition and development of transitional housing as I recall the application said it would be combined with another million dollars is that the million dollars you're talking about um, you mean Belchertown Road and East Street School? No, no, sorry. The oh. preceding, the town's own request for $500,000 for transitional housing, that application said that it, that money would be combined with another million dollars. So is that the ARPA funds? Yes, okay. that is, that is, that, that was referencing the ARPA funds. I, and as I said, I can't go into detail, but there are multiple opportunities we have. Uh, for potential projects. Um, so, as you know, land values and land costs in Amherst are 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 high, and they're they're climbing higher. So, I think our acquisition over on Belchertown Road, if I recall correctly, was seven hundred and thirty thousand um, for about five acres. Yeah. So, um, although a million or a million five sounds like a lot of money, if we have multiple projects in the in the pipeline. Um, I would just put that out there that it doesn't go as far as as I wish it did. Um, uh, to earlier points by the committee members, again, I would just hope the committee would remain open to perhaps coming back. You know, if if in the future we need to come back, we certainly will come back to you with updates as well as potentially um, additional asks. Um, there was one other piece of that I wanted to throw out there, and that is that once we select an applicant for uh, to develop East Street School and Belchertown Road, those two, those multiple parcels, uh, it was very clear in that process that that applicant might come back to the CPA uh, committee for additional funding. So that wouldn't be, I don't think that would be in the spring of 22, but that might be in the fall of 22 for the next round. So I'm just putting it out there. So the good news is projects are coming. We're very active. We're collaborating with the trust, but that means we're going to need a steady stream of dollars. And so I'll just stop there. Thanks. Okay. So it sounds like, in fact, there is more movement at this point than there has been for some time. And I'll, I'll just point out again that borrowing is also an option for specific housing projects, just so. I mean, we can't do that at this point because there is no specific housing. Right. You can't borrow money to put into the trust fund. But if there was a specific project that the town was was purchasing for, like we did with Belchertown Road, right. it could it could be a borrowing. Right. Although at some point we're going to be doing nothing but debt service. <laughs> <laughs> for a good cause? Yeah. <laughs> That'll make meetings a lot easier. <laughs> um. All right, well, shall we, shall we move ahead with $250,000 then? I think I'm satisfied that there's in fact a little more urgency than um, I had thought. <clears throat> All right, who would like to make a motion? Oh, Andy, you have a question or are you moving? No, on? I'd be happy. I'd love to make the motion for the okay. $250,000. All right, Sonia, do we need to specify using reserves, putting reserves towards this? 
No, we just reduce the the amount that we're going to vote for reserves. Right. Oh, that I was, no. I see. No, because it's basic. It's basically all already available. Right. Okay. The committee doesn't does not have to point out the funding source. They just have to have a specific dollar amount. We handle the funding sources when we do okay. the council orders. All right. Thank you. Okay. Then is there a second? Second. Um, Anna. All right. So I think we're, I don't know where we are. Let's say we're starting with Hetty. <laughs> so this is $250,000 to the Housing Trust. Aye. Andy. Aye. Sam. Yes. I'll Andy, take care yeah. of those strikeouts. Oh, yeah. I'll fix it once we get the votes in. It's like yen or something. Um, Tim? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Dave? Yes. Katie? Yes. Anna? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Fantastic. I think we have accomplished everything we can accomplish at this point. Well done, people. I'm interested to see uh, such... <laughs> such unanimity we had uh, some tough discussions i think so interesting uh but that's great so that our recommendations will be very strong um tim uh sorry <clears throat> i get a little bothered when we have totals that end in deficits so i would propose we reduce the reserve amount by 66 894 42 so we have a break even I think Wherever what Sonia just explained is that no, actually there was, go ahead, Sonia. You do need to vote this reserve. So you would need to reduce it and vote the, this reserve you need to vote. It's not need, saying, so yes, it needs to be voted. Do we need to vote it tonight? Or, I mean, it has to be part of the package to council, yes? Right. But we- a positive, Tim. We're in the positive to the tune of 480,000. Previously, we were in the positive to the tune of 600,000. So we're not actually in a deficit. We just we're, we're in a deficit at 66, right? Tim, Tim, let me say my, my interpretation is that we are going to reduce the every year we have to vote how much to reserve. We okay. are going to reserve less for next year. It's not like it's in a savings account and we have to pull it out. I understand. Yeah, yeah. So we will vote a reserve that is smaller than last year's. So your reserve total is 133.105. I need even numbers. I don't deal with pennies for budgets. <laughs> so, okay. So, so we that's, vote a that's the amount you're voting on. And if the North Amherst Community Farm comes back with a different proposal, mm -hmm. when we vote that, we can adjust if, if it's after this has all been voted, then it would then you would need to specify from budget and reserve. Okay. But if it comes before it's voted by the council, we can just adjust the vote for the budget and reserve before it goes to council. All right. Is that clear? Yeah. Would you but okay. would you tell me again the number that we need to vote on tonight as a result? Five hundred and thirty-three thousand one hundred and five dollars. Can we make a motion or do we want to? Yes. Keep... Yes. Okay. So uh, I move that we um, budget five hundred and thirty-three thousand one hundred and five dollars for general reserves. I will second that. Thank you, Tim. I don't know if you still have a question or the hands just up. No, so the down all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet, it brings it out that we are not overexpending what funds we have, including the reserve. We have 58 cents left over. Right. <laughs> I understand. I'm with you. Let's get rid of the pennies. Okay, who seconded? I Sarah. Did. Sarah, thank you. Sarah Marshall, yeah. Got it. All right. Where are we recording this vote? Or just we will know. It's not right here. Okay. Yes, it is. It's, it's just orange all oh, the way across. All right. Um, let's start with Andy. I, Was it yes or an I? Yeah. Sam? Yes. 
I'm a yes. Tim? Yes. Uh, Dave Williams? Yes. Katie? Yes. Anna? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And Hetty? Yes. Okay. Now we're done. <laughs> Um, actually, we have a couple more things to, to talk about. Um, um, Sonia, will you be able to send me this page because I'm drafting the report or chunks of it and I want to. Yes, I will. Yeah, okay. I can do it tomorrow. I can't do it. Yeah, no, that's, I'm not going to do any more tonight. All right. Sure. Is your hand up again? <laughs> oh, sorry. That's all right. Okay, so we are going to need to meet again um, to talk about the track, hopefully, potentially also the North Amherst Community Farm. Um, so I suggest, unless uh, Sonia has a different date that we shoot for mid-January and we won't have Anna with us, but nevertheless, we can act. Um, Sarah, before we, know. we do the, the meeting idea, can can Robin say something? Oh, sure. Sure. I, yes, she's waited a long time. Sonia, can you bring in Robin Fordham, please? Hello, Robin. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I just pulled off. It was good timing. So thanks for letting me in. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Uh, um, some really great deliberation uh, around these uh, start preservation proposals. Um, I wanted to say that I share a lot of uh, the concerns and questions around um, these issues of estimates and um, looking closer at the costs. And it reminded me that when I was on the committee last year, we were trying to push this process to a point where um, applicants for, particularly for a historic preservation, which doesn't seem, is, is I think the one category that's the least connected necessarily to the town and therefore often doesn't have um, uh, people with whom to connect uh, for expertise, um, that we opened uh, sort of a, an information session early so that those applicants could come forward and um, could also come forward to the historical commission. And I'm um, just trying to pull together some ideas about how to help applicants, particularly the two that we have before us today, um, get a little bit more of a historic preservation liaison, whether that's working with preservation mass and their circuit riders, or um, if they can afford to hire a preservation consultant so that when these proposals do come to town, um, they're more fleshed out, and they've maybe had an opportunity to get an estimate from um, uh, someone who does uh, preservation architecture specifically, since, um, you know, for, particularly for really big jobs like this. Um, and so that was just a, a reminder that the committee might wanna take that up again, and I can take it up again with the historical commission. Um, I know that the Hills House um, mentioned that they were directed, I think it was by Anthony at the time, that one um, estimate was sufficient, and my public comment would be to um, suggest that actually, I think it's really important for, um, for applicants to bring more than one estimate forward, and if they need help identifying um, appropriate sources, maybe the historic Commission in our area can um, assist with that because you really don't get a sense of what the variances of those are. And then my final comment would be to ask that um, the, I know that we can't require it at this point, but to ask the town maybe to ask the applicants to continue to confer with the historic commission as these very big projects go along. And is it my understanding correct that they can't start projects or spend money until July 1st, correct? Yeah, make sure they know that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but they could be talking. They could be talking with the historical. 
right? Yes. No, they could. No, yes, they could be taught. That exact. That exactly. That's exactly my point. That there's some time for us to kind of, um, you, you know, it wouldn't be anything that would be binding. But if we can give guidance in any way, shape, or form, and certainly these are such big projects, we'd love to. Um, we'd love to see how they come along and 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 have a have a non-binding but um, pleasant partnership with our with our applicants and potentially awardees. So. Right. That that's my comment. Okay. Thank you. Good, good job, guys. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I will have a suggestion uh, regarding that in a moment, but let's get back to a, a next meeting date. Sonia, would January thirteenth work for you? If if we even have more information from about the track at that point, I mean, I, I don't have a sense really of. I don't think that town council is going to act soon on our report, so maybe there's no rush, but I know you will have other things to do. Give sorry, I know you're asking if Sonia was looking. I'm, I, asked, I, I'm, I'm first asking Sonia. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just I know you're she, Sonia's looking, but I just I wanted you to know I'm not. You just muted yourself. I can't. I'm available on the sixth. Sonia is available on the sixth. Does that mean you're not available on the thirteenth? I can make myself available. I rather not, but I can. How about the twentieth? Unless you think Sonia that or the you know staff think that we need to finish up sooner. That's why I'm kind of suggesting the sixth. The sixth. I can. Okay. Yeah. How, I right. can make, yeah. Well, let's, let's, we'll tell folks we're going to meet on the 6th. Is that, is that, is that work for everyone? Please raise your hand if you think you can be available on the 6th of January. I, I think it's for me, it's a very challenging week to come back, be back in school and start up again. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know okay. if I can be because if we can't have a quorum and we won't have Anna, then we probably won't have a new member. I can make the sixth. I'd prefer the 13th or the 20th. Sarah, I believe you will have a new member by then. I just am not sure if they can vote on these things because they will have missed the earlier. Well, we may, we need a quorum to meet. Let, you know. I, I can yeah. also do the 30th if anybody wants to do December 30th. December 30th? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> realistic. Yeah. Um, how about the twentieth? Does it have to be on a Thursday? Yeah. Is there a way to do a special meeting for like an hour during the day, or is that just impossible? Maybe. Impossible. Maybe we should have a doodle and not try to do this. Yeah. Online. Um, we will also. I mean, I will try to draft, well, I've already drafted some of the report and I can, I mean, I don't know. I could share as much of it as, as is ready to share on that date, or I could just wait until we've made decisions about the track in the North Amherst Community Farm. All right, why don't we put out, uh, we'll put out a doodle. I will <laughs> confer with Sonia. It does not, have to be Thursday on my account, but I know the planning board meets on Wednesdays. I don't know, you know, what the other regular meeting dates are for the historical commission or the conservation commission, rec commission meets on Monday, just one Monday a month. So I think we'll do this offline. <laughs> um, can I ask Dave Samick, do we think we're gonna have any answers for the track by early January. I'm assuming, I was assuming they were going to come back later on in the year when they have a more concrete proposal, which they can do because it's a borrowing article. So it can be off cycle. Um, yeah, no, it's a great question. As you all have been talking, I'm just, I was, I was part of the site visit where our consultant for the fields came out and, and uh, walked and we talked about timeline. So, so we did ask for materials by mid December, but I think with the holidays and, and time for staff to kind of 
um, absorb that information, consult with them a little bit, fine tune that. You know, I, I think the second week of January might be more realistic. Does that not work, Sonia, or is that Sarah? I mean, if for actually reporting back to you is what I'm saying. Okay. What I was, what I was, what I was thinking it was is that it would be a proposal, a different type of proposal than what was submitted already with more information on there of exactly what they were going to do with the field. Well, since since it wasn't, I mean, we're working with the schools, but technically it was their proposal, and mm -hmm. I don't really want to speak for Doug Slaughter and and okay. the superintendent, so. I think we looked at at the work that Weston and Sampson is going to do as informing informing the eight hundred thousand dollar proposal, which also cascades a little bit into the hundred and uh, what is it one hundred and fifty seven thousand I can't remember the exact number that CPA allocated to them and and the council supported uh, a year ago. So right. in in total, it's. You know, there's already 160,000 on the table. What is that money going to be used for? It was asked for for a very specific purpose. That purpose, in my mind, was not what the school came back and asked for for the 800,000. So I think this work that Weston and Sampson is doing is is going to inform both the use of that 157, 160, and what the school comes back to or comes back with for for you all. Again, Sean Mangano and I are we're we're committed. We're we're invested in in this work. We we've all been been um, devoted a lot of time and energy and and uh, good thinking to the plan for the the field. So we want to do this right and and let's see if we can figure it out. But I don't know well, if it'll be a new proposal, Sonia, or not. Then maybe what we should do is not schedule a meeting until we <laughs> until we have more material to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's no point in trying to figure out a date and then not need yeah. to meet. Okay, so what we could do what we could do, Sarah, is we could be in touch with you uh, once we get the information and then we process it and say, okay, Sarah, we'd like a meeting, you know, this right. the week of X, and then we could do a doodle and see see if it's possible. Yes, we'd also I'd also be hoping to hear from you about the North Amherst Community Farm whether they would intend to you know, modify their proposal or submit a new proposal. If they decide, you know, no, then we're not, then we're done with that. So we just need some feedback. I've already been emailing with Bruce okay. Coldham tonight right. while, while you all were deliberating. So we've had two or three emails back all right, and forth. That's so already... We're going to talk tomorrow. Okay. I, I guess I'm, I'm a little confused because I was thinking our next meeting was to finalize the report. Well, with if these come back they can come back after and it would just be an addendum to an the addendum report. right all right well so what i can do is, is draft the report as you know based on the decisions we have made as of this date and and email it out to you and have a meeting just to go over that it shouldn't be a very long meeting it's really pro forma you've seen the reports in the past there's a lot of boilerplate um but again we do need to figure out a time for that so mm -hmm. maybe let's just do a doodle anyway and maybe it's only an hour mm -hmm. maybe it's only half an hour if i get everything right the first time okay. all right um so we will do that i will draft <laughs> the report and although i need Sonia's help. I'll have to confer with you tomorrow if I can, Sonia. Um, yeah. And then a doodle to discuss it. All right. So also on the agenda, we have discussed changes to next year's proposal form. Um, I know Tim had, I think it was Tim, had one specific suggestion, which we could just discuss now. And if anybody else has ideas, float them now. Tim, do you remember what it was you were I do. Proposing? Uh, yeah. My request would to be to ask each applicant to provide the address of the project 
for which they are requesting funds because I wanted to go I did visit some some projects and I did not know the address of a couple and I had a hard time finding them so just a simple request like right. that so for a physical address if a yes I'll yeah. be not the right. request door but the project itself right mm -hmm. right we Is, can add that yeah okay. anything else occur to anybody that they would have <laughs> liked to see Sam uh, following up on uh, Robin's comment, which, you know, I share the thoughts, we might suggest getting uh, the benefits of getting multiple bids for projects. Uh, we don't have to mandate it, but it certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to work in a purchasing department at a, a defense contractor, and it was standard procedure. And it's a benefit to the applicants, in fact. Right. So if there's a way for us to add something suggesting that the, the Hills House um, applicants were in a particular dilemma, they actually reached out seeking guidance on this mm -hmm. uh, and tried to um, be proactive. So if we had something in the application or somewhere that referenced, uh, you know, it's desirable to try and get a few benefits, particularly for the private uh, project, right. but, but even potentially for some of the outsourced public ones. Um, right. That would be my thought. I was thinking actually around the, the same uh, Robin's point and that one that we might later, mm -hmm. not at the next meeting, <laughs> um, uh, maybe insert some additional language into the CPA plan around just these points and maybe ask the historical commission to supply us with a paragraph, you know, whatever they would want private applicants to know about working with them and getting help for bidding and structuring projects and stuff, all that, whatever Robin um, was mentioning. I, it'd be good to have that in the plan, but I think I would ask um, the historical commission to propose what would, what would be appropriate. And maybe it's not only added to the plan, maybe it's also on the web, maybe it's also in the website and maybe we can put something brief about it in the application form. So, any other ideas? Can I just make a comment on that? I think it's a great idea. However, you would need committee members that are willing to put in the time and, and dedicate to do that. Otherwise, it, it it falls on town staff to do. So then there's a capacity issue. Sorry, to do what? To help help um, proposers go out to bid or get more yeah. bids okay. and stuff. I just, so. Yeah, I thought, I thought Robin's suggestion was um, um, advising applicants to work with the historical. Maybe I misunderstood, but... Um, Maybe I'll pursue that with her or Hetty. Um, we'll have some ideas. Anna? Yeah, I have a question um, to Tim's point. I really, I like the idea of including the address. Should we also include a box for, for projects that aren't on public land saying that it's okay for us to come look at them and visit? Um, just, yeah, just before we just show up, just to get permission to be there or something. I don't know. I. I don't, walk into, I don't want to walk into a, 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 a yeah. bad situation where we end up, yeah, on private property without permission. I like that a lot. Yeah. I do think it would be good. There isn't a lot of time between when the project, the applications are due and we start talking about them, but um, perhaps the committee should make a regular practice of site visits. I think that would um, be great. I think site visits would be great. Yeah. We did that to Hickory Ridge. I know I can't remember any others. If if we had a tour of the if, Jones. Okay. Yeah. I think if you know, we may have to notice it as a public meeting if a quorum wants to go along, and then we can't discuss it. We you know, but we could at least all go see and have a tour by the proponents. So. I think, and and I'm looking at Dave to tell me as long as you are on a site visit and you aren't discussing the project, you don't have to notice it as a public meeting. Um, you just can't discuss it on the site visit because we navigate that with CONCOM on site visit. Uh -huh. We talk about it. We just look at it. <laughs> the studios yeah. ignore each other, huh? Yeah, that's a good point, Anna. Um, yeah, I think you can you can hear about a project from an applicant. So the applicant be it town of Amherst or or applicant X, 
you can hear from them, you just can't discuss or deliberate about what you think. I like it, I don't like it. Um, why, do, why wouldn't you do this? No, you just take it all in, you take notes, and then you deliberate in a public meeting. So you cannot ask questions of the applicant? In, in the I, I questions like you can ask in like clarifiers but you can't ask like what would happen if you didn't paint this right like it's more of is this the area you're talking about painting right am i or am i misinterpreting Dave? well that's i don't know but that's why there's no would be no harm to noticing it i mean yeah unlikely and, that people want to come along <laughs> well the other thing is that they're not public meetings because if they're public meetings, that implies the public can come along and join you at private space X or private space Y. And CONCOM visits are not open to the public. Even if people have concerns, even if abutters have concerns, mm -hmm. they can't go on the site visit. So we can explore all of that. Okay. I mean, it's it's getting late for all you you all, but yeah. we can explore all of that. I've I've often wanted to do suggest we do CPA uh, CPA uh, uh, site visits. I know Sonia would would really love it if I, you know, if I uh, what got her out of the office. Took her yeah, to she <laughs> yeah she loves coming on these to Hickory Ridge and trails and historic sites. I do. I yeah. actually do. He does. Sure. Who wouldn't? Okay. So, All right. Uh, well, we'll, we'll but figure I, out. But I also to... want to say that our first meeting of CPAC is usually talking about the uh, um the proposal form and making changes. Then, right. so write down your thoughts and bring right. it to that first meeting. Okay. All right, then I have I have no topics that I did not reasonably anticipate, but Sam has a question for- I don't have a question. I just has a brief comment before we depart. Uh, last spring or perhaps early summer, Anna and I did a brief presentation with District 5. It's just an information session about uh, CPA with the intent of just raising awareness, kind of going along with the signage and uh, district meetings work well. And I've spoken with Sarah about this and we're going to, I'm going to reach out to the uh, new council to try and schedule sessions uh, sometime in the spring or perhaps even early summer, uh, just where CPA can briefly present at a district meeting, similar to what we did in district five. Uh, We'll have to hear back from counselor, the town council in the various districts if they're receptive to the idea. If they are, we have a presentation ready to go. And maybe, you know, whoever on the committee has interest uh, is would be, you know, welcome to participate. Uh, I'll keep folks informed as it goes forward. But the hope is to just continue to get the word out on all these great uh, opportunities uh, for the community with CPA funding. We've gotten some private projects recently that are fantastic. Some qualify, some don't. We have some bigger historic projects that come from private and it'd be great to see it continue. So I just wanted to inform the committee of uh, that potentiality uh, later or early next year. Okay, thank you for that reminder. All right, then I think we have concluded for this evening and this round. Um, so you will be getting a draft report from me and we will figure out a date uh, for discussing that. And then potentially we will have another meeting to talk about the track or the farm, okay? All right, well then thank you everybody. Thank you. Uh, enjoy right. the holidays and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Take care.